conferences are a little unusual this way and not my favorite thing to do. would rather be in person and with all due respect to, to Tyra for a, an opportunity for her to share the podium with her. That would be a, a wonderful day, but unfortunately this, the world we're in, it doesn't avail us to do that. Um, so we'll do it this way and, and keep going. Um, and thank everybody for joining us. And uh, first, let me start by recognizing Matthew Mitchell. Um, can't say enough of what he has done for Kentucky women's basketball and the University of Kentucky over the last 13 years. Um, you look at what he has accomplished, 300 wins and uh, plus, and then uh, turned our program into a perennial power in the Southeastern Conference. Uh, we were someone that was reckoned with every time we took the floor and created a home court environment at Memorial Coliseum that was difficult to, to play in, it included an SEC title in 2012. And then, uh, Obviously, in the NCAA tournament, we were there often, 17-9 uh, and nine record and three Elite Eight appearances. And uh, more than that, uh, I think it was what he did off the court uh, that separated Matthew from um, a lot of folks. It was his high energy, great excitement, and the way he brought a, a level of, of uh, just enthusiasm to our program. He was a great ambassador for the University of Kentucky. Um, and he and Jenna totally ingrained themselves into um, our community uh, more than just women's basketball. They were great ambassadors. Uh, they did things within the community that were helpful to many, many people in many, many ways. I know it was an extremely difficult decision for Matthew and Jenna, and uh, we obviously want them to be a part of our program. They, they have assured us they're going to stay in Lexington and be around our program, and we're thankful for that. Uh, we want them to... Uh, be a part of our family for forever. And uh, so we're, we're looking forward to spending more time with them as we go. Um, having said that, we've got a season that is 12 days away from beginning. And uh, so we've got to prepare for the start of the 2021 basketball season. And uh, to do that, uh, we've, we've got to have uh, someone leading our program and it's a very familiar face. And uh, we're excited that uh, we didn't have to look very far to, to find someone that we felt like to begin that process, and uh, that is Kyra Elsey. And so I'm excited to see her on the screen with me. I wish she was sitting next to me um, on a podium, but uh, we'll 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 do it this way. And um, but she's been alongside Matthew. In that in those terms, she's been alongside Matthew this entire time uh, for a good chunk of the time, and and been a part of that success that we've had at the University of Kentucky. And uh, so she's been a, a proven teacher. Um, she's been a leader. Um, she's been a, a great recruiter for our program, um, was an incredible player in her days. And, and, uh, and so she's got the, the resume uh, that allows us to, to have confidence in, in knowing that uh, she can begin this process and, and get to know our program a little more at a different spot. And we get to know her from a different spot. And so looking forward to that. She's been a part of, in Matthew's absence and when he's been um, working through his injury, um, she's been leading our program off the court and uh, done a wonderful job and just sort of steadying the waters for our program as we go through uh, these times of just of all the difficult uncertainties of what's been going on with COVID. And, and she has been uh, wonderful in, in just guiding us through all those pieces. Um, but I look forward to spending more time with Kyra here shortly and we'll, we'll get to just philosophically align our thoughts and, and we'll do all of that. Um, but for right now, we've got to focus on getting started, and that's where we wanted to be. So um, we're going to um, let her have the, the floor here and let her enjoy the opportunity as she, as she takes the, the reins and begins the process of leading our program. So Kyra, with all uh, congratulations and, and looking forward to journeying with you. And um, Evan, I'll turn it to I'm not sure how you do these on Zoom, so I don't know if I'm flipping it back to you or giving it to Kyra, but we're gonna, I'm gonna sort of Zoom it to her. So Kyra, feel free to take, take the lead. Thank you, Mr. Barnhart. Um, I really appreciate all of your kind words. Um, thank you to President Capilouto, the UK administration for the opportunity to be the interim head coach at Kentucky. I am truly humbled and honored I am ready uh, to take ownership um, that has been placed upon me. November 12th, it will be a day that I will never forget. It was bittersweet in so many ways. 
I always dreamed of taking over for Coach Mitchell as he rode off into the sunset. I never quite imagined it like this. Um, that's the funny thing about life. It never go goes quite like planned. To Coach Mitchell, my mentor, my friend, my brother, thank you. You gave 25 years of your life to the game of basketball. I have watched you literally pour yourself into Kentucky women's basketball. You have empowered so many women to greatness. This season is for you, coach. We will always honor, celebrate, and be forever grateful to the winningest head coach in our program to date. You are Kentucky women's basketball. To Jenna, my sister wife, Thank you for being you, for your love of this program and, can, and community. You, Sailor, and Presley will always be a part of our Wildcat family. The winning tools of our program are honesty, hard work, and discipline. Coach Mitchell and I are aligned in so many ways in our coaching philosophy. That's what made our coaching chemistry magical and very successful. He has already laid the blueprint for this program and which I'm confident in, and I will follow suit. To our players, thank you for being resilient. You all have been through so much and you still come ready to battle daily. You all have amazed me during this difficult time I wouldn't want to be with any other team right now besides you all. As I take the reins of this program, I will make sure that our core values are rooted in family, accountability, servant leadership, and an all-in mentality. These values are all encompassing on how we will achieve success on and off the court. Family, Naya Butts and Amber Smith. I can't imagine taking over this program without these two by my side. These two ladies, along with Daniel Boyce, Coach Lynn Dunn, have all played a vital role in preparing this year's team during Coach Mitchell's absence. Naya, she and I have been battle tested for over 20 years together. Her passion for the game of basketball is undeniably contagious. She brings a wealth of knowledge, head coaching experience, and is a dynamic recruiter. Amber, my sidekick, my little mini me, my protege. She's helped put this program on the national scene as a player. Her love for this program is second to none. She is a rising star that connects with our players and our recruits on a high level. Amy Tilly, our Dobo, Courtney Jones, our trainer, Tiffany Hayden, our women's basketball liaison, and all of our support staff, thank you. It's the people that make Kentucky amazing. I am ready to embrace this moment. I am a seasoned vet in the SEC, 12 years of coaching experience, five years of playing in arguably the best conference in the country. I am a two-time national champion, an SEC champion as a player and as a coach. I have recruited at the highest level at several institutions. There are so many people to thank for preparing me for this moment. The list is too long for me to even mention everyone by name, but you know who you are. To my mom, the strongest woman I know, thank you for making me the woman I am today. To my husband, Dexter, my number one fan and supporter, I wouldn't be able to do this job without your love and support. To Jackson, my baby boy who loves being a Kentucky Wildcat. Now he loves the players, but I do have to report, 
He loves the dancing girls more. To Bonnie Henriksen, Holly Warlick, and Mary Taylor Cowles for mentoring me and giving me the opportunity to coach collegiate basketball. To the influential women in our athletic department, Rachel Baker, Candace Chafin, Sandy Bell, Steph Tracy Simmons, thank you for your advice, your encouragement, and believing in women empowerment. To the LZ family who love and support me unconditionally. To my hometown of LaGrange, Kentucky, who has poured life into me from the beginning. Last but not least, Coach Summit. Rest in peace, Coach. I hope I'm making you proud today. If I can be half the woman and half the coach you were, I would be doing something with myself. Thank you for believing in me when I didn't believe in myself, for instilling a mental toughness and a work ethic in me that has helped me succeed. Big Blue Nation, I will give you my all. Our staff will work relentlessly to recruit the best talent, to put a Wildcat team on the floor that will compete at a high level. Our players will graduate and give back to the community. This will be a program that you all will continue to remain proud of. Go Cats. Thank you, Coach. Thank you, Mr. Barnhart. We'll open the floor to questions now. Please uh, say your name, your outlet, and who you uh, address the question to. Um, obviously, Mr. Barnhart and Coach Elsie are both here. So, we will start with Fred Calgill. Can you hear me? Yes, sir. Awesome. Uh, Kyra Prusa, congratulations. Fred Calgill, WLKY Louisville. Uh, we've known you a day or two, all the way back to LaGrange. You have a street named after you uh, in LaGrange. Just some thoughts about the, the foundation that was laid there uh, playing for Oldham County and how far that's taken you here to this now? You know, um, I have received an outpouring of love um, from my community and family in LaGrange, Kentucky. I do have a street named after me. I think they didn't have anything better, uh, better to do uh, with their time, but you know, it's an amazing community. You know, I'm so honored. I know they are proud and uh, to grow up in Kentucky and have the opportunity uh, to coach at the state school. It's a once in a lifetime opportunity uh, that I will not take uh, lightly. Next question goes to Charles Hallman. Good morning, Coach. Can you hear me? Yes, sir. Congratulations. I know it's been a whirlwind time, but I'd like you to reflect upon the the, the, the significance of grow, being being among the growing number of black women coaches who are who, who have been hired this this off season and who's coming to part being a part of this profession and also just if you want to expound on anything else that you talked about especially about your kids graduating and reaching out to the community. You know um, the coaching community. It is um, a family community. This is a tough pro pro profession uh, to be in. It's a lot of hours, it's a lot of sacrifice, but it's very rewarding. You know, I got into coaching originally. I want to inspire, impact, influence um, young women. And God has given me the platform um, to do so. There have been so many um, black coaches uh, to lead the way in order for me to have this opportunity um, and one thing that my coach, uh, Coach Summon, has always taught me, um, you know, there are people before you to lay the foundation. Um, now you have the opportunity, and it is my responsibility uh, to pay the blessings forward. So whatever um, I can do to help other coaches um, to lift up um, young players that want to get in this, the profession, um, I am willing, I am able, and I look forward to blessing someone else like I have been blessed. Daryl Bird. 
Uh, good morning, Kyra. Daryl Ware with the Cat's Paws. I wondered, have you, have you had the moment yet to kind of look in the mirror and realize I'm not just taking over a team, I'm taking over a top 10 team with the potential player of the year and wow, I got to get this right. Um, it has not totally hit me yet, um, but I do realize uh, that I am taking over um, a top team in the country um, and I'm just going to use it as positivity. Uh, not every um, head coach gets to walk in to a team that has been successful and I have been receiving a lot of uh, text messages and phone calls um, from mentors and friends and colleagues uh, that are giving me advice and uh, the best advice that I have received thus far. If all else fails, put the ball in Ryan H Howard's hands and let her do what she does best. Uh, so to um, be able to coach a player like Ryan and the talent that we have on this team you know, I do understand um, a lot is at stake and I am ready for this moment. Been there as a player, now as a coach, and now we're about to put it in action. Larry Vaught. Yeah, Mitch, I wonder if you could kind of walk us back through how you, how Matthew maybe gave you the decision, how that came about and how the players and their families, I guess, maybe found out about it last night also. Yeah, sure, Larry. I, you know, it's, um, you know, obviously Matthew is um, incredibly special to us, and um, he's, Matthew's a hundred percent guy. Um, he is, if nothing else, he doesn't do anything halfway. It is a one hundred percent deal, and um, he'd been sharing with me a little bit about the, the challenge of just getting back to hundred percent after his his uh, surgery and. And that, I think it's been documented. Um, and he just, uh, a couple we talked a few times and he just couldn't quite get to where he felt comfortable. And um, so he, uh, he called, um, my days are a little, this is Friday, so it would have been Wednesday. He called Wednesday and said, hey, can we talk for a few minutes? And I said, sure. And he said, I just feel like I'm not where I want to be and I'm not 100%. And, and um, we, he sort of went back to that same phrase. He's he's an all in kind of guy. Kyra used that 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 terminology all in, and and he just felt like it was not where he wanted to be, or didn't feel like he could um, be in that in that mindset. Um, so he said he was going to step away, and uh, was pretty resolute in that. And we talked about a, a variety of thoughts, and he was resolute in saying, "I think it's time." And uh, so I'm re very respectful of that. We've got a friendship that runs a long time. He's 13 years as a head coach here, but he also spent some time as his assistant. And so I've known Matthew for a long time and, and wanted to be respectful of his, of his thoughts and his wishes and for him and Jenna. And uh, so we talked for a while and we talked again uh, yesterday morning about just making sure that I said, let's sleep on it and, and let's, let's make sure that we're where we want to be. And and then I, we talked and about steps forward and what we needed to do and walked through that with the team yesterday. And uh, I let uh, Matthew visit with them and explain his decision. And then I followed up and talked about the process of bringing Kyra on board and giving a chance to work through that process. And, um, and then I, I let them have their, their time as a team. So uh, Kyra might be more, um, have the ability to talk about the players a reaction and they're not reaction, but how they were feeling. I, I didn't want to think that's a family moment that maybe I needed to, to let them have the family have that time together. So uh, that's sort of how uh, we played the last 48 hours. And, and uh, I think is um, inc inc incredibly respectful and on all fronts. And I'm thankful for, um, again, the, the friendship that we've developed with the Mitchell family over, over, last 18 years, whatever, 15, 18 years, whatever it is in total. And, and I don't intend on that, letting that stop. And Larry, he's, he's a part of our family and always will be. And um, so I'm thankful for what Matthew has contributed to this community. I'll let Coach Elsie address um, the conversation with the players. That's the second part of your question there, Larry, since she had the conversation with them. You know, it was a really tough day um, emotionally. Uh, for the players and staff, uh, 
coach has been our leader. He's been our coach. He is our friend. Um, you know, they signed up to play for him and they were um, emotional, but happy that he was truly at peace um, with his decision. Um, and they want the best for him. They want him to be happy. And uh, between phone calls and texts um, throughout the night, um, they said, we are going to grind coach. We are going to put our head down and make this the best season. That is the best way we can uh, pay honor and tribute uh, to coach. So it will be a transition, but we will be ready to take the floor on November 25th, and they are going to give their all um, for coach and this program. John Hale. Hey, for uh, for Mitch, obviously it's it's been a, a very emotional week on a number of levels within the department and a very difficult semester with everything that's going on you know, COVID and, and everything else in the world. I'm, I'm just wondering what, what's kind of been the week like over there and, and how are you all kind of weathering this storm right now? You know, I, I, there's no mystery. Um, and it's, uh, it's been a tough week. Um, I, I, I'm not gonna, I mean, sugarcoat it. it, it the Schlarman family is, is heavy on our hearts. Um, that has been, um, John Schlarman was, uh, a guy, and this is not the press conference that we were talking about, John, but I, we, if you, you brought it up and we'd be remiss if we didn't talk about John Schlarman and his impact at Kentucky. He is um, to our program what um, embodies toughness, competitiveness, and all of those pieces. And um, So it was a really hard, hard 48 hours. Um, and as a, we lost a member of our family. And so that was tough. And then to have a, a conversation on the same, the same window, um, losing a, another member of our family in a different way. And uh, that's been a little bit tough for all of us. And, uh, but the, the blessing in that is we have someone like Kyra that we can turn to that um, loves this program dearly and in, embraces the values that we have. And, and, and wants to represent Big Blue Nation and those things. But it's been tough. Uh, it's been a, you know, there's just a, every day, it seems like with um, the, just trying to get our teams ready to go and ready to play and, and the challenges that COVID has presented for just getting to competitions, it's been hard. Um, our players, our student athletes have done an amazing job of, of being ready. Um, they have been uh, diligent in their preparation um, they have been very helpful in terms of the protocols. We've asked them to, and discipline just to be, give us a chance to play. And so um, we've made adjustments in how we do our work and, and they've been really, really good. But all that being said, this has been a really tough week, John. It has been really hard. And, uh, um, and so uh, to see Kyra smile and to see her be able to share this moment with her is, that brings a little sunshine to the to the week, and, and we're glad about that. Um, but um, not going to lie, it's it's been a been a lot, and um, I'm, our staff has been incredible, uh, from operations to facilities to everything that's gone on. People have really stepped up and done amazing work, and and just trying to give us a chance. It's been, uh, uh, but it's been a tough week. Gary Graves. Uh, good morning, Kara. Um, I guess the follow up on what you said earlier about the early, I mean, the easy part of uh, giving the ball to, to Ryan, but um, having coached under, uh, having worked under Matthew for so long and worked at Tennessee and Kansas, um, how much of an influence of, of, of all of those places is going to play into your coaching philosophy? I mean, or do you have any other kind of little wrinkles that you might try to install yourself? Um, yes, um, they all uh, contribute to how I will coach. Um, the thing that I said about Coach Mitchell and I being aligned in our coaching philosophy um, you know, we were all under Coach Summit's tutelage. Um, so that is our, our, our foundation. Um, 
I am a defensive minded. Um, you know, I want to be tough defensively, um, disrupt. Obviously, we are going to continue to play up tempo, uh, recruit um, players that are versatile, um, in which our team is extremely versatile now. So there's um, endless possibilities of what you can do um, offensively. I will say Coach Dunn in the last uh, three seasons has turned me over to the dark side um, because she said we had too many uh, defensive coaches on the floor. So she would always scream offense, offense, offense. So she has turned me over to the dark side, which I am grateful for um, now that I'm going to sit in this seat of um, being extremely offensive minded, intentional, knowing what you want to run for your personnel. So um, this year we will, um, we have installed a lot of the things that we have run at Kentucky in the past. It fits our personnel. Um, I will probably add some more quick hitters uh, as we head into the season um, simply because this, our versatility uh, this year and depth makes us different. So I want to make sure, um, unlike last year, we have a post presence inside. So we want to play inside out with uh, Kiki and Todd, uh, Dre uh, makes us different with the addition of Olivia Owens. Um, we have people that can score inside. So we really relied on the outside shot um, last year, perimeter heavy. Um, this year, we truly can play um, inside out, which changes the dynamic of our offense. Josh Sullivan. Uh, congratulations, uh, Coach, and uh, this this one does for Mitch. Um, do you envision this uh, as a potential long term replacement, and how do you approach that? Um, and also, you mentioned that Coach Mitchell, you hope, will still be involved with the program. Do you know in what way that will take place? Yeah, Josh, on the on the, la on the last part of the question, I think just we want Matthew around. I mean, I, we you know, there's no official capacity, and if, if that's where they're going at this point, at this point, we just want him to be a, just to know that he's always a part of our family and uh, that he's got a um, he's got a really special place in our hearts. And he and Jenna and their and their girls are always always a part of that. So no, and then in terms of the first part of your question, absolutely, we wouldn't we wouldn't be taking any steps if we didn't think that we could we, this would be a long term solution or a long term thought. Um, but much like any interview process, um, usually an interview process, you have an opportunity to spend some time going through a couple different conversations, just talking philosophy and making sure that you're aligned. And I haven't had, because of the, how fast this occurred, I didn't get the chance to, to spend time with Kyra on that. And I think that's an important step and uh, just making sure that we're aligned philosophically and cultural, the way we're trying to do our culture and our program and, and just making sure that we're thoughtful in that. And um, that, I think that's part of my due diligence and the things that I'm responsible for as the athletic director, and she understands that, and, and and I think that's the step we all have to take. And so she's ready to go on that. I don't think there's one moment. She sat in my office probably a year ago, I'm guessing, and, and she talked about what it would take to be a head coach and wanted to know what I look for. And, and I think she knew the answers before she asked the question because she's really, really smart. And so she prepared. She's got a game plan. I just like to see what the game plan looks like. You know, like any any coach, she doesn't walk in without a game plan. I'd like, as the athletic director, I'd like to know what the game plan is. And so um, we'll do that and we'll spend some time and there's no timeline on that. So I'm not gonna say it's December 1st, December 15th, end of the season. I'm not gonna do that. But uh, you guys know me well enough to know that we'll be uh, thoughtful and thorough and, and, uh, and spend some time. But I told her this morning on the phone that we'll be intentional about getting together, but right now her focus is November 25th. We're less than, you know, 13, 12 days away, two weeks away from tipping this thing off and, and uh, with a really good team who she has worked diligently hard with in the last six months and, uh, and she's ready. And so um, we're ready to uh, enjoy the, um, the fruits of her labor and how hard she's prepared. And we're anxious to watch our team compete. Thank you. We got time for a few more. I'm going to try to get to as many as I can. We'll start with Maggie Davis. 
Hi, Coach. It's Maggie Davis, um, LAX18. Obviously, you are very familiar with this team just from being on the staff for so long and then taking over pretty much the reins over the summer. How much does that help your transition into this role now? You know, I think that was big. Um, first and foremost, relationships with the players, um, no matter what seat you sit in. Um, so I've always had great uh, relationship with our players as well as everyone on our staff. Um, but I thought that was big just for the trust factor, um, familiarity with them and them with me and this staff. Um, but overall, coach has always empowered everyone on our staff uh, the opportunity to get on the floor and coach and really give our opinion. So I don't think it was that big of a shock to the system, to the players for me to take over or uh, for Coach Butts or Coach Amber to coach them because that's what coach has always empowered us to do. And in the uh, long term, I think that has paid off for us in this under this circumstance. Thank you. Daryl Bird. When I first heard about this last night, my initial thought was, why not just take a year leave of absence, especially in a COVID season that could be wiped out at any moment. Was that ever a, a talk conversation with Matthew? I believe that was for you, Mr. Barnhart. Okay, uh, yeah, I'll be glad to take that. No, I, we talked about different options, Daryl, um, different things that, that um, may be on, the, on Matthew's mind, and he was pretty resolute. It was time to step away. And um, I'm, you know, I hope that, that um, I'll always be respectful of, of what people have on their hearts. Matthew's very thoughtful. Um, there's, there's not anything that he doesn't do without much, with a lot of thought and in prayer. And, and I mean, he is a thoughtful man and he's a prayerful man and he said he spent time in both those in both those uh, ways just to, to walk through that with Jenna and they had come to the decision and and he was resolute in it and so I, I respect that uh, that's why I still sleep on it one night and, and and but also we couldn't wait in terms of where we were we needed to have some direction for our program too we needed to be able to move forward and so and he um, called today's Friday Thursday morning and said yeah, it's I'm I'm solid in where my thoughts are, and I need to need to move on. Okay, and, and for Kyra, once you're into into the games, coaching into in the heat of the moment, kind of what the voice in your head? What do you would you think Coach Summit would be saying to you at that point? I think Coach Summit would say, you know, <clears throat> remain poised, remain confident, uh, but prepare, um, prepare for. Uh, those moments, those situations, not only have yourself prepared, but have your team prepared. Uh, so we know what we're doing and we're confident in it. Preparation. That's what Coach Summit would tell me. Big Gabriel. Coach, congratulations. To follow up on uh, Maggie's question about relationships with the players. Um, you know as well as anybody, you've been in basketball your entire adult life, that the relationship with an assistant coach can be quite different than that, that of the head coach, good cop, bad cop, whatever. Could you talk a little bit about how that's going to change for you? Will it be a dramatic change? I mean, you're only moving over one seat, but it's a big move. Well... Um, I don't quite know yet. I have always heard that it, it is a dramatic change. Um, this year might be a little bit different just because they have always known me um, as their assistant coach and we have great relationships. Um, I kind of joked with them um, yesterday. I told them that I would make some mistakes along the way, um, but I would figure it out and navigate um, through this time. And now I, I will be the person that won't make all the popular decisions um, and they won't always like them. Um, but I know, I'm confident that they know that my heart's intention is in the right place uh, to make a decision for the whole um, of the program. But I think um, having open communication with them, honest communication uh, flowing both ways, uh, I think that will be vital uh, to this transition. 
final three questions here. We'll start with John Wong. Hey, Kyra, congratulations and welcome. You've got big shoes to fill. So my first question is, how well can you dance? And secondly, uh, I heard in your opening statement, you talk about servant leadership. We hear that from Mr. Barnhart all the time. We've heard it from Coach Mitchell a lot. What exactly does that mean to you? One, um, no, I cannot dance. That is uh, not um, in my realm of expertise. I will leave that to uh, Coach Amber Smith. If she would like to take over uh, dancing at Big Blue Madness, um, I'm all for it. Um, I'll pass the baton to her um, for sure. And then what was the second part of your question? Servant leadership. Could you explain what that means in your mind? Well, servant leadership for me is our players are top priority and everybody has to be willing to give above and beyond themselves. Um, so I talk to the staff, our support staff, pour yourself into the players, whether it's mentoring, whether it's talking, whether it's giving them um, a shoulder to cry on, whether it's a hug, whether it's encouragement, actually just pour yourself into someone else and in something bigger than yourself. That's what servant leadership means to me. Larry Vaught. Yeah, Kyra, I think it's now been almost 25 years since you left Oldham County and decided okay, Kentucky's not right for me. I'm going to go to Tennessee. Now, oh. you're back in, now, now you're back as the head coach of Kentucky. How much of a priority does in-state recruiting become for you? And how different is this program from the one you said no to 25 years ago? Okay, we're not going to uh, bring up the past, but you know, I did say uh, yes uh, to Coach Summit. And to my defense, um, it's hard to say no to Coach Summit, uh, an icon. Um, however, this program is in a totally uh, different place than it was when I was coming out of high school, and it was great, but for me personally, it was not, it was close to home, not far enough, but I wanted to play for Coach Summit. Now, in-state kids uh, are huge to the success of our program. Um, we have Aaron Toller, Emma King, um, Blair Green, who all will play, um, impact roles for us. And then it is important for us to keep homegrown Kentucky girls at home at the state school. Our final question goes to Maggie Davis. Coach, I was going to ask you about your big, uh, big blue madness plans, but I think John covered that. So I guess I instead will ask if you have a favorite walk up song idea. I mean, Coach Mitchell always came out to my town. Do you have a song that you always thought would be maybe your walk-up song? I have not. Um, honestly, I have not gotten that far, um, but I'm sure the staff and or the players uh, will help me find something that they designate as cool. So um, I know they will hook me up. I'm confident. <laughs> I'm sure that is priority number one. Thank you so much, Coach. Congratulations. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you everybody for being here today. I know it was a short turnaround from the release last night, um, but we appreciate everyone being here, including Coach Elsie and Mr. Barnhart, who obviously have busy days ahead um, to move the program forward. So we wanna thank everyone for being here today. We will send out a transcript and the video. And if you need anything, everyone has my cell and my email and you can uh, reach out and we'll try to help you out as much as we can. So thank you. Thank you. Thank you.